Machine. Hey, what's up with it, y'all? Welcome to my podcast, Cold Narratives. I'm your host, Iceberg Green. About to let y'all hear some of these cold narratives. Check it out. Hey, what's up with it, y'all? Iceberg Green in the building. So today we're going to break down politics as usual. Um, as y'all can see, it's going wild in there, you know. And um, the Democrats, Republicans, you know, you know how they go every year. They tell you to pick a side. This is the biggest election of all time. Uh, they've been saying that for years, you guys, and I'm sure it hasn't been that big. You know, nothing has changed. It's in all the democracy, save democracy. And to me, I'm trying to figure out what democracy uh, is. There two versions here. Is there a Republican democracy, a Democratic uh, democracy? I'm trying to figure this out, y'all, because I see him fighting um, against each other. He wants to get rid of him because of this. he wants. And it's not really about the American people. They'll say that. But this is really about uh, power and politics and them, you know, getting the right people in place so they can continue to fuck this country over. That's what I believe. Either side. They just passed a bill. They just passed a bill that you have to have citizenship in order to vote. Yeah, while all this stuff is going on, they're in the background passing these bills. So I wonder how that's going to affect things. Having all these people come over here and yeah, they're not going to be able to vote. So what are they here for? They're not going to be able to vote. They're not going to be able to enlist in the Army, Navy, nothing. They're just here to do whatever they decide to do in our country. So, hey, it is what it is, right? That's the way the world feels. It, just let it go. Don't worry about it. Don't. It's, it's going to be okay, right? The government is going to make up for all this stuff that we're going through. They're going to make it right. Y'all believe that? Y'all don't believe that shit. That's why y'all, uh, you know, trying to decide who you're going to vote for. If you're going to vote. And again, okay, let me get back to this. So, there's a few people that I've been hearing names floated out there. And y'all have to. I don't even have to say them. And I'm just going to let y'all know, there's, either way it go, man. Biden, this person, that person. It's a wrap. People done got up on, on them. And I say that because they were the ones who were outspoken. How they, they, you know, they catered. They say they catered to black people, our needs, our wants. And all right, we want to throw that minority word in there, even though black people have never been minorities. OK, so that's that applies to all other people, basically immigrants. But um, we throw that in there and they send all this stuff, come over here, do all this. And now they can't even vote. You done got them over here on these planes, boats, got them hotel rooms, got them all this stuff. And they're not going to even be able to vote. They got to get citizenship. They got to have it. How many of them got citizenship? I'm talking about how many immigrants and whatever got citizenship out here. Or are they just out here? What did y'all think? Right. So uh, that's the point I'm making. They do all this stuff to us. And these people are not going to be able to vote and listen to army. And this is what our president has done to us in our country. The one that's, the one that's in office right now. And again, back to the situation um, at hand. Our president, should he get up out of there? Me personally, my opinion. First Amendment, he need to get up out of there. What need to happen, this is just, just my opinion, what need to happen, okay? They need to go ahead and have a runoff in this democratic situation, whatever, because we know Trump got it over there. They need to have a runoff, okay? Decide, right, who it's going to be, right? Because everybody, you know, whoever come out, everybody going to say, okay, it's Kamala, it's Gavin, it's whoever, right? They going in on him. Everybody from actors and, and, and everybody going to get up out of here. They want him to bounce. Do y'all want him to bounce? Me? Yes. Get up out of here. I mean, what? What else can you do? Joe, you done did enough wrong to my community. You done did a lot wrong, Joe, to the black community. You've made so many promises to the black community. You've done a lot more for other communities than you've done for us. This is a fact, Joe Biden. I'm saying this because I care about my country just as much as you do. Um, I'm sure I do. I'm sure a lot of Americans do. We care about our country. You know, we have family members that's fought for this country. You do too. All of us do. And um, the way this world is now, what you run in it, is chaotic. Um, it has people scrambling and just understand what life's about now. You got the youngsters thinking politics is a joke because of you. You have the older generation just stuck thinking that you're going to help them. And you need help yourself, Joe. I'm saying this to say we need someone that's going to be effective in there. That's going to actually have our best interests in mind. And you got in there and we voted for you 80 percent. We got you in there um, so you can help us, not the, the almost middle class black people. 
we voted you in there so the older people can, you know, relax while their kids get good jobs and be able to provide for their families. We were doing this hoping that you would make a way. And you didn't. You didn't. Everybody is still impoverished in cities across America, black Americans. You have not done anything to improve the hatred, uh, racism against black Americans. Um, the veterans, the people that fought for this country, they don't get as much respect as the immigrants. Um, the homeless people here, they get treated worse than the immigrants. These are facts, Joe. I advise you to really think about what you've done to the black community, you know, and what you didn't do. All that, think about it. And you have a vice president that says she's half or a percentage of black. And she also said that she's the same one that's not going to do something specifically for one group. She's going to do something for everybody. To me, that says... We don't have black peoples. Um, you're not a main priority. And, and in this world we live in, I believe black people definitely need to pr be a priority based on what happened with the freedmen. And I can go on and on, but I don't want you guys to um, lose train of thought on what's going on with this government. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, uh, Black Caucus. Duh, and I'm speaking to y'all specifically, Black Caucus right now. You were part of a movement from what I read about that created a, a platform, a major platform for black people, major. You've had years upon years to get this country right for black people, black Americans. You've had years to get this country right to where people can feel comfortable coming to you guys. We don't even feel comfortable and we have a black caucus, you guys. We have a black caucus. You understand what I'm saying? That means that they represent a major portion of black America. There are advocates. And what are they advocating for? Programs. It seems like they're advocating for impoverishment. I don't see much. The most, I'm going to keep it real, y'all. The most I hear um, about black um, Americans, what do they talk about? When you see them get up there on the stage, what do they talk about? See, in the HBCUs, that's like one of their main plays in their playbook. They go to them. They go to these little cookouts, they go to AME Church, they go to the same spots every time they come looking for our votes. You notice that playbook ain't changed. It's the same places over years they've been going to. The same ones. Why they don't switch that playbook up? Come to the grassroots. In each city, there's grassroots in major cities across America. Black grassroots, yeah, it's there. Why don't you come down there? You go all these other places where, like I said, these are almost middle class black people. Um, and they're looking to get that loan forgiveness because, like I said, they're almost middle class black Americans. So they, you know, they, they shucking and jiving to get what they can. See, down here, we fight the most, the hardest. We put in the most work, you know, seriously, grassroots. We have always put in the most work throughout time. So when you see them on TV, these Jim Clyburns and people of that nature, Talking about when you hear a black person in general saying, hey, y'all, um, no reparations for y'all. We going to get some programs for y'all. Stop trying to act like people just don't like Biden and all that. He's about to mess this country up even more. Y'all know that. Don't try to act like y'all don't know that. It's, sometimes the older people, they get so stuck in their ways. They prideful. So they when it when it comes to an end, they yelling, oh, my Lord, right now. So it's, it's that point right now. And that's one thing about them. You know, they get stuck in their ways and they don't want to change. And sometimes you got to pass a torch, man. I, I just had a birthday the, the other day and I'm getting older and I can't wait till all the projects that I got going on are done so I can pass a torch to somebody, you know, and so they can keep it lit. I just want to ask y'all, do you think Biden has, I'm going to just say Americans, do you think? Biden is going to help America flip its economical problems, economic problems that it's having. Do you think that Joe Biden can flip the switch at his age? Do you think that cognitively that all the things that he has to, you know, um, consume in his brain, all the stuff that he has to be on point about that an older person that may have a harder time being on point making decisions like this in a timely fashion? Hey, it happens. So I believe, you know, with all the stuff that's going on in the world, so many different angles, so many different things he has to um, process. I think he's just not equipped to handle all that stuff. Now, we're talking about a senior home, 
Joe, go and get you some rest. Here's your medicine. Go to sleep. He the man for the job. But right now we talking about running the country. We talking about we're at war. We're sending money over here. We're talking about the American people dying, homelessness, uh, gun laws. We talking about women's bodies. We talking about all types of racism. We talking about reparations and all this stuff. Do you think this president can handle even a quarter of that? And I'm sp- I'm generalizing it because I want you guys to understand that I'm not just all about myself and my people. I care about America. But what I will say, us as a people, black Americans, we've always been systematically oppressed. So you cannot deny that. Okay. Everyone has their issues, their dealings with this government or whatever happened. We're having ours now. So I'd appreciate if everyone would respect the fact that black Americans are waking up and realizing that we have to fight for what's ours that's rightfully ours. Um, And we will not be shamed. And if you're older, if you don't agree with reparations, that's fine. But don't talk down on it. If you do not agree with reparations, don't talk down on it. Because like these other groups, you may not agree on what they're doing, but you don't talk down on them. You know, when other groups do this, and I don't even want to go into it because I'll become some. You can opinionate things and say, hey, this is how you guys should act. This is how you guys should go about this. But when it comes to fighting for some, y'all disappear. That's what I'm saying. So don't knock us for fighting for what's ours if you are going to knock us knock everyone else go talk to the natives go talk to the japanese go talk to the jewish community go talk to asian community hispanic community they've all eaten off this government too but one thing about all those groups and the indians in particular the thing about all those groups that's different from black americans in america they were never enslaved The biggest difference with all those groups, they were never enslaved in their own country for decades. So that's the difference, y'all. So when you talk about us, we have a a big, 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 big claim that's rightfully ours. This is not no civil suit. This is some Supreme Court justice shit. So everybody fall back. You know, like I said, if you don't have nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. Because this is what people have died and we still fighting for. But I'm going to land my plane on that. I had to put a bug in y'all ear, man. Cold narratives, man. Y'all have a good one. I'm out. I want to thank you all for tuning in. I also want to say God bless those going through the struggle. And make sure you watch out for them cold narratives that the government trying to push on us, y'all. And to all my black people, I will be nothing without y'all. God bless you all.